It's liturgical Sunday. Okay. <laughs> it's real. These are my favorite Sundays because it gets so many people involved in service. Um, welcome and good morning. My name is Ashley. If this is your first time to come to Wells or if you're passing through town for the holidays, we really hope that you feel the warmness and the love that we share here as a community. And if you're one of our normal, regular, well, n none of us are normal. See, y'all totally called me on it. If you're one of our regular folks, welcome back, welcome home, and I hope everyone had a blessed holiday. Um, before we get started with our service, if you look at the back of your order of worship, there are some um, announcements just to take note of. BJ is our ever, ever present elf here. She, um, if you go back here in the parlor on the bulletin board, she has organized um, our angels to adopt this Christmas. Um, about half of them, I think, have been taken since 8.30. She's saying no, not, okay. So we have a lot of angels that need to be taken. So if you look at, if you look at the angels, see the child that you want to adopt, um, and then there's a sign-up sheet on the little coffee table below it where you put your name and the child that you chose. So please just take a look back there and help us um, make the holidays wonderful for some of our kids in the area. <laughs> this evening at 6 o'clock will be our Wells PM service at Table 100. We did this a couple months ago, and it was a wonderful experience for everyone who was there. So if you have time on in your calendar this evening, we really hope you can come out and join us. Um, and it's in kind of one of the back rooms um, at Table 100. So 6 o'clock, Table 100, um, we hope to see you there. Charge Conference is Wednesday, dis, um, December 9th. That evening, Charge Conference will be the event of the night. There will be a potluck before it at 6.30, um, but there will be no classes for adults, children, or youth. However, don't let that deter you from coming because this is kind of our one yearly annual meeting where we decide on how we're going to move forward in the upcoming year. So it's a great thing to participate in, or if you're just not sure of how the church works, it's a great opportunity to come see um, kind of some of the conversations that are taking place. Kids Day Out is this upcoming Saturday the 5th. I have a lot of kids signed up, um, and we're really excited about it. We have lots of parents who have offered to drive us. So um, if you have not told me yet that you have a child that wants to come, um, I would love to hear from you just so we can be sure we have seatbelts for everybody. So it's from 10 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon or evening. It's $20 a child and we're going to high heaven and salamookies and doing crafts and movies and a bunch of different stuff. So it'll be a really fun day and I hope that y'all can participate. The altar flowers um, are placed today by John Gressley in memory of Judy's birthday. Um, and as we enter into this time of worship. I'll ring the chime three times. Ian Watson is going to call us into worship with green sleeves. So welcome to Wells.
please stand for the gospel lesson. This lesson's from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun. Nope. Just kidding. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in on a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day to day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Every day he was teaching in the temple, and at night he would go out and spend the night on the Mount of Olives, and it was as it was called. And then the people would get up earnestly in the morning and listen to him in the temple. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Imagine you have lost your treasure, lost your heart. Imagine that you are searching through every possible space and crevice. What drives this search? Hope. Imagine that you are lost yourself, turned around and upside down. Imagine that you keep turning, turning, turning until you come round right. What moves you then? Hope. Now imagine that you are waiting for morning to come. Imagine that the night is dark without stars or moon, and yet you know that it will soon be light. What keeps your eyes open? Hope. Hope holds us fast, believes beyond believing. Hope pulls us forward. It is the language we speak when we say, this is not the way it should be. In the holy Advent season, dare to be the people of hope. We'll remain standing as we sing um, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4 of hymnal page 211.
You may be seated. This morning we light the Advent candle, the first Sunday of Advent, which is hope. Hope in the darkness, a light for the world to come. A light that will be so shown so brightly that it cannot be hidden. A city on a hill, a star in the skies from which people will come from all over the world because they long for hope. Join me as we pray. God, we ask for hope today. Hope and not some vain cry of desperation or something that's caught up in our own tangled web of self-deceit. Today we look for hope. Hope that creates a light in a dark place. Hope that says yes when everybody else says no. Hope that says you are loved when others say you are ugly. Hope that says, come to me, all who are weary, all who are troubled, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hope says, not yet. In the name of Christ, we pray this. Amen. The Witness of the Prophets, from Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing our hymn of consecration, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, both verses 1 and 2 on hymnal page 196.
Thank you. You may be seated. Hear now the witness of the apostles from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see your face, that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Join me as we pray. God, we gather today in hope. Hope for the things that we, we anticipate. Hope for things that we get anxious about. And hope for things that we seem to have no answers for. So we ask this morning just for a few moments that you would remind us of what hope is. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. As you look at the gospel passage this morning, it talks a lot about things that are coming, bad things. But it also speaks of a time when Christ will return. Now, Bible scholars debate whether Jesus himself or the early apostolic church really taught in such terms that he was going to come again. I mean, because they all pretty much thought that with his resurrection, as Keith said in the early service this morning, whether he comes again or not, he's still here with us because he is resurrected. T.S. Eliot says, we shall not cease from exploring. And at the end of all our exploring, we will be to return to where we started and know the place for the first time. How do you know hope? And how do you know it for the first time? C.S. Lewis said this, I didn't go to religion to make me happy. I always knew a bottle of port would do that. (laughs) If you want a religion that makes you feel comfortable, really comfortable, I certainly don't recommend Christianity. The dichotomy. The writer of Hebrews says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, things not seen. What do you hope for? What do you hope against? Funny how Ole Miss shirts turned up in our church today. They were all in the early service, though, don't you know? But hope is more than wanting your team to win. Hope is is more than just wanting something. We just celebrated Thanksgiving, a day of gratitude, a time that we edge forward now and slowly become of all the moments that lead us up to Christmas. Some of you folks sitting right up there in the pew right now, you take my word for it, you're not going to enjoy it. It's going to be a pain where you sit because you're going to make it a pain where you sit because of the way you treat the holidays. Christmas decorations before Halloween's even over? Really? I told you, shared with you the last few weeks, our house looks like a a bomb went off in it. Yesterday afternoon, my wife made that house look more like a home with Thanksgiving decorations removed and Christmas hope. Put up. There's something about seeing and visualizing that hope. Something that means when we hope that we're delivered by goodness and grace, and that hope not only brings faith and love, but it brings charity. Jesus was and is and is to come. A few years ago, in 1988, and I spoke of this a couple of weeks ago, 
There was a book that came out, 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Occur in 88. We're still here. No man knows the day nor the hour, not even the sun. So every day when you throw your feet out of that bed and you place them on the floor and you take that first step of the day, it's a step of hope. It's a step of, I believe that today I can make a difference, that I can do something different. It's not so much about we look at this Christmas time as the return of Jesus coming back again, but I think, at least for me, we look at the hope that he brings every day. Keith said it before, I've said it before, Christmas is not just December 25th. If you really want to go back in history, Jesus was probably born sometime in the summer, but it fit better for the church to make it in December. But the hope of Christ rings eternal. I thought about this week that hope is one of the qualities of life that people seem to be obsessed with all the time. We have a major holiday, you may have a birthday, something. It's all surrounded with hope. You find sections at the store at Walgreens or wherever you shop and all the the wonderful holiday Hallmark cards that give you the theme of hope. As parents, some of the first words we teach our children are invariably the words, thank you. We hope our children will be thankful children and yet gratitude is is not hope and it's not meant to be something that's simply external or an expression of something hope is something to be cultivated on a regular basis for nothing else for the sake of our soul and our connection to God so many things in our lives try to prevent us from having a posture of hope towards life. Because sometimes life just ain't what it's supposed to be. But you have to keep working. You have to keep hope. You have to keep faith. You have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Hope is a reason for our basic survival. It is necessity in life. Frederick Buechner in his book, Telling Secrets, talks about hope and he says these words. Stop trying to protect, to rescue, to judge, to manage the lives around you. Remember that the lives of others are not your business. They are their business. They are God's business. Even your own life is not your business. It is God's business. So leave it to God. It's an astonishing thought, and it can become a life-transforming thought. I like the way he says it here. Unclench the fist of your spirit and take it easy. What deadens us most to God's presence within us, I believe, is the fact that we have this inner dialogue which we continuously disagree with ourselves. We want to hope, but we look at the negative. We want to love, but we see the hate. We want to reach out and hug or extend a hand of friendship, but judgment gets in the way. I suspect that there is nothing more crucial to true spiritual hope than being able from time to time just to stop and simply say, God, I hope and pray that all that I believe is true. So from upper rooms and empty tombs, love calls out to us today. And it says hope. It says hope. It says hope. My prayer for you today, 
as you come to this altar in a few moments? Is it you discard the worries of your past and all that would prevent you from hoping in the gracious beauty of what God has to give to you? May you relinquish your fears and anxiety of tomorrow and root yourself in the love and hope of this very moment. May you have the spirit and energy this Advent season to strive to see the good in everybody, everywhere, and every place you go. May gratitude and grace and hope overflow your cup. And as you leave this place today, I pray that you go in the peace and the hope with a joy that comes from a thankful heart of knowing Jesus Christ, the hope of this world. I have a little book that I use as a devotional book. It's called Guides to Prayers for Minister, Ministers and Other Servants. I don't know why they gave it to me, but they gave it to me. And in the reading for the first Sunday of Advent from Carlo Coretta says this, God comes thrusting onward with his love, not attracted by our beauty. He comes even in moments when we have done everything wrong, when we have done nothing, when we have sinned. God comes. And that is the hope that we bring this day. In the name of Christ, I'm on. Keith. This anthem is written by Paul Mons. He wrote it um, while his son, his three-year-old son, was in intensive care with double pneumonia. They weren't sure if he would make it through the night. So Paul, musicians, we pray through our music. That's how we, you think we play, but we pray. And so he wrote this piece on a napkin while in the intensive care unit. And he pleaded for Jesus, for Jesus to come with all of the hope that a father would want for his expectant, for his child, to live. But also, it serves as an anthem for Advent and for us as a, as a church in the beginning of, a coming, of the new year. So, it came to me at a very important time in my life, a very difficult time in my life, um, when I first started singing professionally in New York City. And so, it's, it's, it's wonderful for me to be able to bring it to you. Um, at this next Advent stage in my life that's a little closer to Christmas these days. <laughs>
Dear brothers and sisters, simply put, the sacrament is the story of self-sacrifice. Simply put, it is a story about love. In the light of that sacrifice and in the light of that love, let us pray to God. Lord, Lord of hope, hope we, we confess, confess our, our lack of hope, hope to you. Forgive, forgive us when we eat and, and drink from, from this table, table, but still believe that darkness reigns and light ends. Forgive us and help us hope in you, God of our salvation. Forgive our own betrayal of your sacrifice and love. As we eat and as we drink, teach us hope. On the night when one of his closest friends betrayed him to the enemy, Jesus, eating with his friends, took some bread. He thanked them for it and then divided it up for each of them. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. As often as you eat bread, remember me. Then he took a cup of wine. He thanked God for that too and handed it to his friends, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, remember me. So we eat and we drink to help us remember. To help us remember the hopeful mystery at the heart of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. As we approach the altar, let us stand and be bold to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, I invite you to stand now as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Be seated. And now, dear brothers and sisters, as you feel led to come, please come to the altar to receive, and having received, arise and go in peace.
Have you ever noticed in a worship service that sometimes the silence speaks more loudly than the noise and the sound? God's present there too. you will in your order of service together we remember the salvation Jesus wrought with his own life together we anticipate the salvation Jesus offers in our lives as well live in hope I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of response verse number one of 206 I want to walk as a child of light If you're not doing anything tonight, it's 6 o'clock at Table 100 in Flowood. We're going to be having a service there. Uh, Mark Williman, Bob Gates, and friends will be doing some music. James will be sharing some music as well. Keith will, will bring a sermon. Uh, it's in one of the back areas. If you would like to go eat, then try to get there early, 4.30, 5 o'clock and eat. We'll start our service at 6. There's also time after that if you would like to eat there as well. But we're trying to kind of branch out. We're not trying to be McChurch, but we're just trying to get out and, and introduce ourselves into new areas. So, and Keith wants me to remind you, the offering is next. <laughs> you may be seated. ourselves this day. It's all we have to offer. It's all we can give. So we give it to you lovingly with all our souls. In your son's name. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thanks to Annie today for filling in for Jamie on the keys. Thank you very much. If you will join hands for our benediction song.